Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, walkthrough of how to get started with Salonis Snap, uh, or also known now as Salonis Free Plan. My name is Sahan fischer Akifard, and I'm a data analyst for Apollix. And today, the goal of this session, this live stream, is to show you how to get started with Salona Snap, to uh, show you how to create your first analysis, and, uh, to see how very uh, easy it is to use Salonas. So, a little bit about myself. My name is Sahan fischer I am a German Iranian. I'm 22 years old. I was born and raised in uh, Cologne, Germany, and I did my bachelor's then uh, and my master's in the Netherlands in Rotterdam. After that, I started at Apollix. Apollix is a consulting firm that uh, specializes in process mining, located in Rotterdam as well. And uh, yeah, Apollix started about two years ago. Uh, the co-founders, Alex and Jos, um, and you should definitely, after this live stream, check out the video, um, the, the booth video from uh, the two of them. All right, so the goal of the session, as I said, is to get started with Salona Snap. First of all, what is Salonis Snap? Salonis Snap is basically the free version or the demo version of the Salonis Execution Management System. The Salonis Execution Management System is the number one process mining tool uh, or process mining technology, actually, uh, in the world. And um, yeah, Salonis Snap allows you to start for free and kind of dive into um, how to get started with Salonis. So, uh, uh, first of all, to clear up a little bit what process mining me means. Um, so, for those of you who are not too familiar with uh, process mining, process mining aims at creating a full transparency of your business processes and to start creating, um, to analyzing your business processes, understand where inefficiencies lie and improving these business processes. How do we do that uh, with Salonis and especially in process mining? That's uh, together with the help of your IT system. So every company basically has an IT system where they track every single change that has been done in this business process. So whenever, for example, a certain activity has happened in your business processes, there is a certain timestamp that points out that this activity has happened. So for example, today in my demo, I will show you the order to cash process of our fictionary firm um, named uh, Woodcorp. And what Woodcorp does is basically they um, produce wooden pallets. And um, in this order to cash process, it starts off by receiving the order up until uh, checking the credit score of the customer, making sure uh, to start producing and uh, until like delivering the product to the uh, to the customer, and every time there is, for example, now we receive an order, there is a certain timestamp that identifies that a new order has been received, and based on that, we can connect all of these kind of timestamps together, together with a unique identifier of our order in this example, of or of the project that, uh, not the project, but the object we are kind of flowing through the process. And we can create a full transparent view of how your business process actually looks like. And uh, basically, from your IT systems directly, fully, uh, fully objective, without having to conduct any interviews or any qualitative uh, matters in that regard. And once you have created this full transparency, you can start off in Salonis, sort of analyzing it, uh, analyze uh, inefficiencies based on KPIs you select yourself. And you can also further analyze root causes for these inefficiencies, why certain inefficiencies happen. And based on that, improve your business processes while constantly monitoring them because you can uh, you can basically float in your entire IT, uh, your kind of IT system information directly on a, uh, on like daily into Salonis. So you can not only just optimize it like once, but constantly monitor it. And lastly, also what you can do with um, Salonis is creating action flows, which help already optimizing certain uh, processes. So for example, in this order to cash process, we want to make sure that we always deliver our orders on time. Now, for example, we can set an action flow that sends a report out to, um, to uh, our employees that, for example, five days before our promised uh, delivery date is set that everyone gets kind of a reminder with these orders 
having to be sent out in the next five days so we can ensure that we send out these orders in the next five days or that we can send a message to the customer saying that the delivery will be late. But this way we can always keep up customer satisfaction. So that's basically what process mining is, what we can do with Solonis. But I think the, now the fun part starts of actually seeing uh, what we can do uh, in Solonis now. So I will share my screen now. First of all, uh, I hope everyone can see my screen now. You should be able to. Um, I will always look, by the way, on my big screen. So if I'm not looking directly in the camera, don't wonder why. Uh, so uh, first of all, you can get started on this page, salonis.com slash solution slash free plan. Here, start for free, uh, put in your work email. And after two, three minutes of registration, basically you will be invited to your own Snap environment. This is how the Snap environment looks like. You have a tab for studio, Salonis gallery, and event collection. Uh, Salonis gallery is basically uh, demos that Salonis has already created, um, but we're not too interested in that. Uh, what we want to do today is put in our own files into um, Salonis. So how do we do that? Uh, we start off by going to event collection, and we start off by creating a new data pool. I will name this data pool Salonis World Tour Walkthrough. And I'll copy it because I will need it afterwards and save this. So we have created our data pool. Usually what we do now with our customers here is we connect their IT system, their on-premise systems directly to uh, Salonis. However, that is obviously a feature for the full version. But what we can do in the kind of free version in the Salona Snap is um, putting our own files in. So I will select certain files now uh, that we have prepared before. So first of all, we have this Woodcore activities table. So what is the activity table here? Activity table serves as our kind of blueprint for our uh, process. So what we can see here is the case key that is a unique identifier uh, or not unique in this case, but the identifier of what um, what we're basically looking at in our process, uh, which in this case is our orders. Uh, the activity points out what is happening. Uh, the event time is uh, pointing out what time activity is happening and the sorting uh, is optional. You don't need to have it, but uh, in case, for example, uh, as here, we see that order received and check credit scores are at the same time. What sorting now allows is to say what needs to come in front of the other one. Um, but it isn't a necessary thing that you need to have, but it's highly recommended. So we will go on to um, finish this up. And um, yeah, cool. The next thing is we will select the next file, and that's the case file. What is the case file, basically? The case file serves as contextual information for our cases, in this case, our orders. So the first order, for example, is of product type crates. It was manufactured in Aachen. Um, that's his order quantity 5,000, delivered quantity 5,300, and so on. So basically, there is certain contextual information for each of the orders. Um, so the case file helps perfectly, and uh, we can finish it up here. And have our case files ready. Now the next thing we need to do is to create a data model. What is a data model you saw already in those two case uh, in those two tables that you need to kind of connect um, the tables by the case key and that's what we do in our data model. Um, usually what happens is uh, that we have way more tables like up to 15, 20 tables. And that's where really the data model helps to uh, kind of combine these tables correctly uh, to later load it correctly into the studio um, to get a cool view of it. So we will select this and continue, select the activity table. So now we need to set the activity table. As I mentioned before, the four things the activity table needs is a case ID, activity name, a timestamp, and sorting. And now we kind of set the activity table. Now we need to connect the case table and the activity table. So here we connected the case key. Beautiful. And we set the case table as a case table. We go on data loads and we force the complete reload. So now our data model gets created. 
It will take a couple of seconds. No problem, everything went smoothly, perfect. Now we can go into studio, and now the fun part, really fun part, so it's with uh, analyzing. I've already created some packages before, but we'll start off creating a new package, and we will call, call it uh, Solonis Workflow Analysis. We will create it, and we will create a new analysis here. So uh, create a new analysis. Uh, Let's call it uh, order to cash analysis. And now we need to connect it to our data model, which we have just created. Uh, so it knows exactly what uh, tables to put into the analysis. And once we have done that, we can create it. And we have uh, basically have created our analysis, uh, or the, the kind of blueprint for our analysis. Now uh, we'll select a new sheet and get started analyzing. So first thing I kind of want to do is get an understanding of um, what, like, get a transparent view of how the business process uh, or how the order to cash process actually looks like. So I will select a variant explorer here and kind of drag and drop it a little bit, make it look nice. I hope everyone can see well in there. All right. So here now, what we can see is the Variant Explorer. Variant Explorer basically shows the amount of different variants. So we have 7,692 unique ways that orders flow through the different activities. So we have a total around 20,000 orders in our analysis, and there's 7,692 unique ways that orders flow through it. So it's pretty, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually uh, quite a complex. Uh, that's the first thing we can see. It's such a complex system that we already have. Uh, the most common path, you see it here, by starting production, receiving the order, checking the credit score, changing the production start date, um, that doesn't necessarily have to happen, uh, confirming the sale, finishing up the production, loading the shipment, and delivering the goods. Um, now, what we can do, for example, the fifth variant, we can click it, there are 255 cases there, and it is, looks pretty similar, but what it doesn't have is this change production date. So it's basically the same thing, but it doesn't have to change production date. Um, and yeah, if we select more, uh, we can see more different variants, more different connections between those activities. Now, if we select everything, we will see how complex our system, uh, our, our um, process actually looks like. And uh, we also call this the spaghetti model, uh, but um, yeah, I don't... I don't want to get too deep into it, but we can see how complex actually such a maybe easy to order to cash process uh, yeah, looks like. Uh, what you can also do, last thing I want to point out, for example, is you can change here from case frequency to like throughput time or something like that. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, this is getting started with the variant explorer. Now what I want to show you next is um, I want to create some cool graphs. So what we can do right now is create a column chart now. What I want to see is I want to see the number of orders by factory. So I want to see how many orders did we get uh, by which factory. So I click on dimension. Dimension is kind of like the contextual uh, information that we get. And in this case, I'm interested in factories. So I will select the factory, and as a KPI, I will select a case count, which is the number of basically number of orders. I will rename this to number of orders. And what we can now see when I press on done is a nice little uh, column chart that already shows there's uh, like more than 8,000 orders um, received in Essen, uh, whereas uh, around 8,000 are also processed in uh, Aachen, whereas very little. If we go out of the, um, uh, the edit mode, we can see Wuppertal only has eight orders, whereas Essen, for example, has over 9,000 orders. And you can do way more with this. For example, if you want to make it look a little nicer, you can go on the diagram here and select this uh, different color. You can uh, change the border options, a bunch of other possibilities you have. And on top of that, that's not the only thing that uh, you can do. You can uh, put in a bunch of other charts, pie charts, donut charts. You can put in single KPI components. 
uh, you can put in filters, all kinds of things. And uh, yeah, super, super cool. And it's, it's super easy to use because it's just drag and dropping things. Um, for the sake of simplicity now, I already created uh, a dashboard of how a certain, um, how it could look like if you wanna, if you have a certain KPI and you wanna derive value out of and information out of it. So I'll create here, I ordered, already created kind of a dashboard for on-time deliveries. So what we can see here are these single KPI components that I saw. Number of orders that we have, we have in total 9,953 orders. We have around 34.29% uh, late deliveries, a total value of around 19 uh, billion euros. So down here, you can see the product type and the deadline and volume conformance del uh, or delivery conformance. Delivery conformance basically means did our, um, did our uh, order arrive on time? And the volume conformance uh, basically means did uh, our that did the desired quantity uh, also arrive in the exact quantity or where the deviations to that? And we can, for example, now select the factory product type, a bunch of other options um, that, that we can see. For example, here, uh, Duisburg has a 73.68% uh, delivery conformance, so 73% of the times uh, the delivery was on time, whereas the, uh, also has a really high volume conformance. Uh, with 82%. Now, uh, other things we can do here, we have days of late deliveries, we can select certain amounts. So we select, for example, the ones less than one are basically all deliveries that were on time. But uh, for like the late deliveries, what we can see here now, it's pretty cool is how much, how much should we lose from uh, late deliveries based on uh, the different factories. So for example, in Essen, we lost around 8.3 million euros from that. So that's kind of an idea of how a dashboard could look like uh, based on your own KPI. The last thing I kind of want to show, uh, and that's something you can create, uh, by the way, yourself for anything you want to have, like it's full on, you have the possibilities of uh, creating your dashboard as, as the way you want it to have. Uh, last thing I want to show you is an action flow. So basically when I create an action flow here, what is that action flow again? As I said, I want to have a report of all the deliveries that are coming up, you know, all of the delivery dates that are coming up. And I want to get an email with the customer name, the order ID, and uh, the dates until delivery. So I run this now, and what we can see now in the email, it's pretty cool, um, is, I don't know if you can see my screen yet. Um, Got an email here. Now I should be able to see it. You get a low, um, low table here. So you can automate this. You can send this continuously in. Um, so that is kind of how action process. You can schedule it to do it on a daily basis, and you can get these daily reports. So you don't even have to look up anything. You directly get it into your email, and directly can uh, kind of process these orders and make sure that they are delivered on time. So that is a kind of explanation of how you can get started with uh, Salona Snap on the things you can do with Salona Snap. Um, as you saw, it's super easy. Everyone can do this. Um, I hope uh, I hope that uh, yeah you enjoyed uh, this little walkthrough. If you have any questions, feel free to leave the questions right now in the chat. And um, yeah, other than that, um, if you want to have a chat. If you have more other questions afterwards, feel free to reach out to my LinkedIn. It's in the description. And we can have a chat about process mining uh, or uh, about, for example, Salon Snap. Uh, thank you for um, listening in. Are there any questions? Um, I don't think so. All right. Um, so thank you for listening in. Thank you um, for taking your time. And I hope you have a great day and get started with Salonis. It's amazing. Cool.